Hi, welcome to the first part of arithmetic series. We're gonna jump right on in. So, uh, all right. So we are going to talk about what arithmetic versus geometric is really just by defining arithmetic. Uh, we're gonna deal with sums of arithmetic series and we're gonna focus on real world applications in the second video. Don't forget these six vocab words. I will use them throughout. So make sure you understand infinite versus finite, explicit versus recursive, and convergent versus divergent. So take a moment, write these down, take a photo, make sure you bookmark them in the PDF, whatever you have to do. These are the formulas for today's lessons. So if I want to determine the difference between each term in this, in the following arithmetic sequence term, 17, 12, 7. So what's the next, uh, what is the difference between them? Sorry. Then we literally just do 12 minus 17, 7 minus 12. It's 12 uh, 17 minus 12, 12 minus 7. Either way that you do it is fine, but if you notice something, if I do 12 minus 17, I immediately end up with negative five. So I always, I tend to do the second minus the first always, because right here we notice it is a minus five, so we are gonna have to note it, notate it as negative five. This is what's called the common difference, um, and it can be both positive or negative. It can denote uh, addition or subtraction. So if I have the common difference, in this case, negative five, can I use that to predict the next four terms? I sure can. 7 minus 5 is 2, minus 5 is negative 3, minus 5 is negative 8, minus 5 is negative 13. Boom, we're done. Okay, so we have a nice little recap about arithmetic sequences. How do we use that? Boom, we predicted it. How do we use that to actually figure out some information like explicit recursive arithmetic formulas and then moving on to the sums of them? So did you know that instead of just using, hey, there's the sequence, here's a pattern, let's figure it out, you can actually create something called the explicit versus recursive formulas. And here they are one more time, but let's go ahead and practice with them. So if I give you this information, 12, 21, 30, you could figure out the pattern and you could apply it. But what if I wanted to know the 300th term? Wouldn't it be nice to have a nice, neat formula ready to plug in? So that's the point of these, this, these couple of slides. So information you will need is the D, the common difference, the first term, A sub one, and that's it for the most part. Yeah, that's pretty much it. For the explicit formula, all you need to do to plug in here is A sub one, N, and D. For the recursive, all you need is the D value in A sub one. That's the, that's the only information that you need. So in this one, 21 minus 12 is uh, 9. 30 minus 21 is 9. So we got a positive 9 D value. Our first term is A sub 1 is 12. That should be the easiest thing for us to figure out. So let's dive on in and create the explicit formula, the formula that I could use to solve any term at any point, and I don't have to worry about it. So I plug in what I know, and then I distribute the 9 because that N value is our variable, so we're okay with that. And ta-da, now if I wanted to find the 500th term of 12, 21, 30, I could. I would plug in a sub 500 is equal to 9 times 500 plus 3. That's it. What about the recursive formula? Every now and then this is useful, so it's important to know how to create this for ourselves. It's nice and simple. As you can see, what I've done in orange is literally all I had to do for the recursive formula. That's it. So, boom, there's my information. Why is that so important? Well, it's so important because what if they want us to find that nth term? Look, they did want us to find that nth term. In this case, they want us to start with the 16th term of the sequence 2, 5, 8. So let's go ahead and create our explicit formula. The d value between these is a positive uh, 3, and there's our explicit formula. So I'm going to go ahead and chug it in. The first term is what I needed, 2. Uh, my n value is 16 because they want to know the 16th term. So 16 minus 1 is going to be just an automatic plug-in. And the d value, the common difference, is times 3. So I go ahead and continue on, plugging away, plugging away. Boom, there's my answer, 47. If you wanted to test it out on a calculator, you could. You could do 2 plus 3, and then plus 3, and then plus 3, and then plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, and you could get to 47 on your own. But wouldn't that be a waste of your time, especially when you have higher terms like this, the 68th term? You're going to be sitting there on that calculator for a real long time. So why not use the explicit formula? It is very easy peasy. So let's go ahead and get our SCEDA set up. We need the d value. We need our explicit formula. Our d value here is negative 8. And as you can see, I've already typed through all that information for you. And ta-da, we get the answer, negative 511. Can you imagine going from 25 to negative 511 by just subtracting 8 
that many times on your calculator. So that's one of the reasons why this is such a, this is a really good pattern to start to understand and use. All right, so we really focus on sequences. How do we focus on those series where we add them up? Well, let's jump on in. We can use something called an nth partial term, and that's what these formulas down here are for, that S sub n stands for our partial sum. We have some uniqueness happening between these two formulas, and I'll highlight it in the next couple of slides, but make sure you, you note that there is a distinct difference between formula one and formula two. One more time, the formulas for today's lesson, and let's jump on in with that example. So if I want to find the indicated sum of this, negative 5, 2, 9, all the way to 317, well, the first thing that would be easiest for me would be to figure out some information. Which formula do I want to use? Well, let's do a compare and contrast really quickly. Formula 1 requires n. How many terms are there in this sequence? a sub 1, the first term of the sequence, and a sub n, the last term of the sequence. Formula true requires n, how many terms there are in a sequence, a sub 1, the first term, and d, the common difference between them. So there's a big distinct difference between the, the two formulas, and that's that a sub n versus d. What do we have? Well, we have negative 5, we have 317, we know the difference from 2 to negative 5 and 9 to 2 and blah, blah, blah is 7. We just don't have that n value. And if I look here, that the difference between these two formulas, well, we have the difference between those two formulas. What we don't have is n, the commonality between the formulas. So, uh-oh, we're going to have to find that n. We're going to have to technically go back a few slides to look at the formulas for explicit and recursive arithmetic sequences. Or you can just wait for the next slide because I'm going to pull it up right there. We don't need recursive because I don't want to sit there and figure out each and every single one. What I want is explicit. Because I know 317, the last term in the sequence, I can figure out the end value for that last term by plugging it into the explicit formula. So let's go ahead and do that. Taking that explicit formula, I plug in for 317. I know my first term. I don't know n. That's what I'm solving for. And I know 7 is the common difference. I plug away, do some math, mathy math, and ta-da, we get n equals 47. So now we're prepared to use formula one or formula two. Because we have 47, I'm gonna go ahead and use formula one. You can see you know, that technically we can use both, but formula one is just quicker. So I plug it in. We know n is now 47. We know the first term is negative five and the last term is 317. Some mathy, mathy, math. And ta-da, I got 7,332. It is a little bit of a two-part sequence to do this, but it, if you notice, it really is just a pattern. You do the same thing each time. So let's do it again. So let's find the indicated sum of this. We want the 28th partial sum, or S sub 28, of this information. So we ask ourselves, what do we know? Well, we know the first term. We know the last term. Nah, we don't know the last term. We know the end value. Yeah, they told us they want the 28th partial sum. And we know the difference because we can do, uh, I should say negative 13. Oops. Uh, we know the difference because we can do 14 minus 27. We can do 1 minus 14. And we get a difference of negative 13. And that means that more than likely my math is going to be incorrect there. Um, but if, if, if it was a positive 13, this would be our answer. And as you can see very clearly, this cannot be the right answer. Ms. Jack has a typo in here. Um, but if you, you know, you want to do the math, I'll probably put a note underneath the video. But if it's decreasing, this value should be very, very small. The big typo is right here. This should say negative 13. This should say negative 13, et cetera. Um, actually, let me go ahead and do that really quickly, and I'll tell you what your real answer should have been. It should have been negative 4,158. So there is a typo there, and it's mostly because of this negative 13. As you can see, it's very easy to make mistakes. Make sure you're not making them as well. So one last example for us to do, find the indicated sum. Uh, here, this one's a little bit funky because it's not starting at one. I wanted to make sure I showcase this. What do we know? Well, we don't know the first term, but we know the first term of our finite sequence. So our a sub one is actually a sub six. And our a sub n is, of course, a sub 28. We have that information or we have at least enough information to solve it. 
we know the n value, and this is what I want to make sure we kind of pay attention to here. Um, to get n, if they give it to you in sigma format, you can't just do 28 minus 6, because if you count it on your fingers, from 6 to 28 would not be 28 minus 6. It's actually 28 minus 6 plus 1. So, you know, you could do that yourself, 6 to 28, and make sure it is 23, but uh, that's just a little something to note. Um, we don't know our d value, but we have enough information to pick between our series formula 1 and our series formula 2. We're going to use formula 1. Plug that in, boom, 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 and you got your answer. And does this one make sense? Well, since this is a 5n minus 17, it seems like it's growing as you get, as, as, as it continues on, because 5 times 6, 5 times 7, 5 times, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It makes sense that our value would be positive 1,564. So I think I went a little over my 10 minutes here, but this is what we just talked about. Arithmetic versus geometric sums of arithmetic series. We will do real world applications in the next video.